Hi, let me show you how to create a customizable count up text effect in DaVinci Resolve. I've got a blank timeline. I'm gonna hop over to titles and drag a text plus effect right onto my timeline. Now this is a little interesting because we are starting this, you know, on the edit page with this text plus effect. But uh, for those of you who don't know, this text plus effect is just the text plus node from the Fusion page, but you just have complete control over it on the edit page. But you can always click this button to open it in the Fusion page. Uh, and we will do that soon because um, there are some controls you can't access from the edit page. But for now, the first thing we're going to do is just super general. You choose a font you like, the color. You can always come over to the shading tab and, you know, add an extra outline or something. Will we do that? Sure. Okay. <laughs> And at this point, just to uh, simplify things, I am gonna click that button, head over to this Fusion page, because um, what we're gonna do next, it's pretty exciting and a building block to some of, you know, the wildest power in Fusion. I'm gonna right click up here where it says template and go to edit controls. In this ID dropdown, you can see, you know, every parameter this node has, but we're actually gonna click up here where it says new control and add something in. I'm gonna type in counter. Uh, I'm gonna select slider on this input control and that's gonna be it. I'm gonna click okay. And now over in this user option, I have this little counter slider. I can slide that around. By default, it goes zero to one. And it does nothing because it's a control, but not connected to anything. And you can do these following steps in a, a few different orders. <laughs> what I'm going to do, um, just to, you know, so we're starting to display some fun things, is come back to that main text effect. I'm going to right click on this text field and come down to expression. And I'm going to type in here just... counter and click off. And because uh, this extra control is located on this one node and it is the only control called counter, you can see if I mouse over this, then down in the corner, it says template.counter. Uh, when you do expressions like this, if you just do the name of the control, it will look within its own node. If I had multiple nodes, then uh, to point to this control, I would need to type in template.counter, but I don't need to here. And you see now that's a zero. And if I come and slide this up, hey, that number goes up all the way to one. And hey, one actually thing I did wanna uh, show off, and I think it will be good to show off here. I'm gonna go back to edit controls uh, in the ID, select that slide or scroll all the way down to counter. And I'm gonna check this button for integer. I will click that and then now, uh, this will either only be a zero or a one. Of course, like other controls, you can actually just click in this box and enter any other number and hey, it will be five. And now that is uh, showing up as text as well. But we want to make a count up animation. So we want this control to change over time. And we're gonna do that with anim curves. I'm gonna right click on counter, go to modify with anim curves. And this is especially something we would have to do in the Fusion page because that enables this modifiers tab. And if I click that, we see anim curves and the scale by default is set to one. So over the course of our clip, this will go from zero to one. Uh, because that is integer, that does uh, change over at the 0.5 value. It's gonna be up to you um, how you want to treat, you know, when that number hits. There are some other expression options. Hmm, well, we'll see. Well, I might show those off later. If I don't, uh, leave a comment and there might be another video. We've got some interesting options for how to control rounding. Anyway, if I uh, change this scale to something like five, then over the course of our entire duration, it always starts at zero, but then counts up to that number. Now this does take the entire duration because of this transition option in this source. Uh, we have a few different options for how we could, you know, speed this up. Number one, we have this time scale. If I pulled this up to like uh, uh, two of a time scale, then it would complete that move in half a time and then just hold. If I did set this back at one, but change the source to custom, then you have this input option and you know, you could set uh, your own values of zero and uh, one and it would execute that move at whenever those keyframes are. This is also really important um, because this uh, does not get uh, uh, influenced by the standard, you know, uh, duration or transition, the, the length of the clip on the edit page. So this takes, you know, a little, probably like what, like four seconds. And if I go back to the edit page and stretch this out, it will not affect that timing at all. One, two, three, four, five, great. I'll go back to the Fusion page, and that is the bones. You might notice, because we don't have that modifiers tab, from the edit page, I don't have a way to set this parameter. If you click and drag this counter slider, then that will, especially because we have that custom source, it does do some pretty funky things to that input. We don't want that, so I can get rid of that 
to where it is. Oh, I, I extended that. That's what's going on here. So it goes zero to one. Uh, so we want a separate control just for control, not that's being like directly influenced by the animation. If you were publishing this effect from scratch, you could um, select that scale uh, parameter inside the anim curves. But, um, you know, just to keep this all simple on, you know, this one node without having to go through the normal processing for macros, I can come back to tools and I'm just going to create another edit control. Uh, or another custom control, and I'm going to call this counter control slider uh, integer for now. I will click OK, and this is just another normal slider. Actually, I am going to hop back in and change that from the default uh, 0 to 1 to 0 to, you know, like 10, just so we have a little bit of room. And now if I go into that anim curves, I can add an expression on that scale. And because this is a modifier, it does need that extra information. So I am typing in template dot counter. I believe it needs caps counter control. And yeah, that goes to zero now. So now it won't move at all. But if we go back to tools, that custom control now directly uh, controls uh, that scale value. So if you were to, you know, go up to what, like 200. And it would count up to 200 over the uh, duration we set with those custom keyframes. And I'll go ahead and show it off because it's fun. If I right click on that counter, uh, nope, if I right click on that uh, template edit controls, if I go back to that counter control and uncheck integer, then depending on when it's sliding in, it might be, you know, way too fast. It is way too fast. Let's, okay, let's come down to like, what, four? Yeah, now we have all, woof. <laughs> now we have all these decimal points uh, which again, you could control by uh, doing that in the control. But if I go back to my uh, text value, instead of counter, I can either type in here, seal, like ceiling, open parentheses, then that counter, close parentheses, and hey, that will round it up. Or I could type in floor, and it will round down. Very helpful to you to just tack on um, if you have a number and you don't want to dive into changing the controls. Or whenever you're dealing with a value with decimals that you either want to round, up or down, uh, seal or floor, uh, put that parameter in parentheses and it will do it. One more really cool thing. Say uh, we are counting up, let me come back to user. Let's go back to 200 because that's fun. Say we are counting up to 200, but we are counting up to $200. How do you tack uh, a dollar sign on here? Well, in this little expression, I'm going to, we're going to do a quotation mark dollar sign, quotation mark space, period, period. Oh, that's, I, I didn't make it a dollar sign. I just did before. Dollar sign. Uh, space, period, period, space, A. I was pretty sure that was right. Okay, so now this number, as it counts up, it just, you know, tacks a dollar sign on it. And it will tack on, you know, whatever you type in there. It could be dollar sign, it could be, you know, any other sign just because. And it's super easy to just tack stuff on, especially to the beginning or end of your parentheses, even if this was back to a dollar sign. Um, you could do, you know, period, period, parentheses, um, I don't know, more dollars. Doesn't have to make sense. We're demonstrating some pretty cool stuff. And importantly, if I go back to the edit page, um, it added that little user slider as well. So now from the edit page, um, I can change this number to whatever I want. If you wanted to change the timing, you would probably need to rig up to Fusion. But if, hey, if you're building this yourself, then you can rig up timing however you want. And if we head back to uh, text, you see that expression. So it's pretty easy to change, you know, whatever you want to go in here and then it will keep doing its thing. Okay, this is a lot. <laughs> and then once you have an effect you like, uh, if you have an open power bin, you can just drag that right in there and it will save all those customizations for any future project you wanna work on. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.